Welcome to this video developed by ECODA and PwC. Companies are required to provide a detailed picture on how they manage climate issues from their business model and strategy to their long-term viability and balance sheet. In order to close the existing accountability gap for climate reporting, our speaker will provide practical tips for European board members. As part of our panel, I would like to welcome Gilda, Gilda Neyman. In addition to being independent director and chairwoman of Green Nomi, a one-stop sustainability reporting startup, Gilda is also the vice chair and the treasurer of the American Chamber of Commerce in Belgium. She's also a board member and a member of the steering committee of Chapter Zero Brussels. I'm also very pleased to have Monique Huet, Monique Huet, who is an experienced uh, independent board member. She has several mandates as board member of Credit Mutuel Arkea. She's also a member of the advisory board of Sur Arvenir. And she is a member of the advisory board of MyBen. Last but not least, Olivier Muller, with almost 30 years of experience in the sustainability field, Olivier is a consultant with an emphasis on sustainable finance and non-financial information. He's a partner at PwC in the Sustainability and Climate Change Department. So uh, welcome, uh, everybody, and um, uh, good to see you today, uh, Monique and Olivier. Um, we're doing this uh, video today on climate reporting. So why should board members care about climate reporting? Um, so I think I'll, I'll kick it off, um, certainly because how to tackle climate change is nowadays a must-have in any corporate strategy. So, you know, by now, the science should be clear to everybody. Uh, if we face global warming that increases by more than 1.5 degrees centigrade, it will seriously impact our way of life. And so reducing greenhouse gases from our atmosphere fast enough to avoid catastrophe requires radical change. All businesses and industries are going to be affected. Uh, progress is already underway. There are many major companies that have begun working in earnest on their transition plans. Uh, there's also the EU Green Deal that provides a framework for a level aligned transition. But let me be clear, business decisions and actions can either slow down or accelerate climate change. And conversely, climate change will drive risks and opportunities for businesses. Uh, it's up to the board to ultimately ensure that these climate-related risks and opportunities are appropriately addressed in the company's own strategy. So it comes down to defining the future purpose of your company and to what extent you will respect the interests of the societies in which you operate. Also in this climate context, investors and the broader financial system are looking for better information to help with capital allocation decisions and to price risk. They're calling on companies to report on their activities, goals, and challenges. The window of opportunity to meet temperature change objectives is going to close in this decade. So it's important to move quickly to action. And that can be hand in hand with a long-term vision for your company. Everybody's path will be different and it must be tailor-made to your company. An ambitious climate strategy is possible when a company analyzes its entire value chain, includes all of its stakeholders and takes full stock of what a net zero world will mean. The mission should be assess which of your activities must be expanded, transformed, or even stopped completely. So climate, change, climate reporting can be a very effective tool for applying the necessary scrutiny that will reveal your company's unique trajectory. So Monique, what do you think about this? Indeed, Gilda, climate reporting is an effective tool. As per GRI, the Global Reporting Initiative, it is, first of all, 
the tool you need to guide the development of strategies, of climate-related strategies and activities, because it can help make abstract, fuzzy concepts tangible and concrete, so that you can set goals, measure performance, and manage change. And this inspires accountability. It helps identify and manage risks. And it enables you, it enables the organization to seize maybe new opportunities. So you shouldn't consider climate reporting as a pure compliance exercise. It is reporting, but it is also for you an opportunity to perform a genuine analysis and report on both your company's resilience to climate change risk and the impact of a strategy on the environment that's the double materiality we are so fond of. So are your business model and strategy resilient to climate risks? How will you adapt to a low carbon world? A second reason why climate reporting is the tool you need is for stakeholders relations because it contributes to improving them, enhancing reputation and building trust. It enables a better informed dialogue and decision-making for all customers, employees, investors, local communities, suppliers, etc. So do not limit yourself to reporting on the policies you have put in place. Also provide metrics directly linked to your climate-related targets. That shows how you monitor, how you perform, how you manage risks. Do report on performance against targets to provide transparency on your contribution to emission reduction over time. And okay, third and last reason for climate reporting is obviously to comply with regulation. Like Gilda mentioned, investors and the broader financial system are looking for better information to help with their decisions. So they ask for improved climate data comparability between organizations. First, the development of numerous frameworks and standards. Maybe Olivier, you can give us an overview of these compulsory and or voluntary standards in Europe and abroad. Of course, Monique. Many different voluntary standards have been developed over time for climate reporting. For instance, the GRI or the GAG protocol, and of course, the TCFD reporting, one of the best known standards for climate reporting. It's impressive that in the area of corporate reporting, ESG has taken on a very central theme. And this is best recognized by how much is currently being invested in these topics. In fact, 2022 turns out to be the year of sustainable reporting. At the moment, there are three key standard setting initiatives that have all overrun and competed with each other. And these initiatives are going to be mandatory. In Europe, we have the ESRS, which in short is for European Sustainability Reporting Standards, which are being developed by AFRAG. As a reminder, AFRAG was mandated by the European Commission to develop sustainability standards in Europe. Uh, for the moment, 12 standards have been drafted covering all ESG topics, including climate change. And the final cross-industry standards are expected um, very soon from now. In the USA, um, SEC climate-related uh, disclosures are being developed. Uh, the ECC proposed rule uh, is quite extensive, around 500 pages long and hugely ambitious. New disclosure requirements cover the risks and impacts of climate change only at the moment. And last but not least, ISSB sustainability disclosure standards published in March uh, 2022 for public consultation um, had more than 200 pages plus a very large uh, industry-based appendix of around 700 pages. A broad spectrum of stakeholders responded to the three public consultations by providing substantial feedback. All three standards are largely inspired by existing voluntary reporting standards uh, the one I mentioned at the beginning, TCFD, GRI, and others. 
So uh, you may wonder why uh, there is a need to have three standards at the same time on climate reporting and not one globally accepted standard. Well, on a global level, the aim is to achieve globally applicable standards for sustainability reporting. Uh, there is the IFRS Foundation that established the International Sustainability Standards Board and the ECC that published climate disclosure rules for public consultation. On the EU level, the goal is slightly different. Reporting is one objective, of course, but also a steering effect is expected from the regulation. So shifting financial resources into sustainable investments is an explicit goal of the EU and encouraging sustainable behavior is another goal. So there are a bunch of new regulations on, on capitalizing on this, the CSRD, the taxonomy regulation, the SFDR, and a new proposal for a corporate sustainability due diligence directive. The EU member states play an important role because they have to transpose then the new directives into national law. So the standardization process of climate reporting has started and there will be more standards to come. It's important to keep in mind that the CSRD forces even more standards there will be sector specific standards on top of the cross industry standards I mentioned. Also standards for small and medium sized entities and standards for uh, non EU companies who would report in, in, in the EU. All these standards are still need to be developed. So a final point concerning the transposition into national laws. So the CSRD is a directive that will be transposed into national law by the EU member states. This is a very important step because the CSRD is a directive. That means that it's not directly binding and national regulation will prevail. However, we can note that the EFRAG framework is so precise that it will create a very consistent playing field among EU states. So first time application of the CSRD will start from 2024 um, and is progressively will be extended, but we estimate that already in 2024, 2024 it will already be uh, consistent among all the EU member states. So now, uh, Gilda, can you talk more about how climate reporting can support effective governance on corporate boards? Uh, sure, that's right, Olivier. Um, the information that results from your company's work on climate reporting goes hand in hand with effective climate governance on your boards. So maybe let's have a look first at what the World Economic Forum says in its eight effective climate governance uh, guiding principles. And I'll, I'll go through those. Um, the first principle is climate accountability. Uh, the board is ultimately accountable to shareholders for the long-term stewardship of the company, of course, and of its long-term resilience to potential shifts in business landscape. Um, the second uh, principle is subject command. So board members should be able to effectively debate and discuss, take decisions informed by their awareness and understanding of climate-related threats and opportunities. So they need to get up to speed. Uh, the third principle is the board structure. Uh, the board is responsible for long-term performance and resilience. So it must determine how to integrate climate considerations into that board structure and into your committees. Uh, the fourth principle is materiality assessment. So the board needs to ensure that your management is assessing the short, the medium, and the long-term materiality of climate-related risks and opportunities for your company on an ongoing basis. So actions and responses should be proportionate to the materiality of the climate-related issues to your company and not just a box-ticking exercise. Uh, the fifth uh, principle is strategic integration. So the board has to ensure that climate systemically informs strategic investment planning and decision-making processes, and that it's embedded into the management of your risks and opportunities. The sixth principle is an incentivization. Uh, of course, executive incentives should be aligned to promote the long-term prosperity of your company, 
And for climate, this can be done by including climate related targets and indicators. The seventh uh, uh, principle is reporting and disclosure, which we've been talking about now. Um, the boards should consistently and transparently disclose all of your material climate risks, your opportunities, your strategic decisions to all of your stakeholders so they know where you stand. And ultimately, disclosure governance should become the same as for financial reporting. And the final uh, principle is exchange. The board should maintain regular exchanges and dialogue with all of your stakeholders to encourage the sharing of methodologies, because this is new for everybody, and staying informed on climate. So Monique, how do you think these principles can translate into concrete actions for our board members? Well, in concrete terms, for you as a board member, first of all, of course, make sure you understand the basics. Climate is science. Reporting, climate reporting is law. So get proper information or training. ECODA is a good place to start. And chapter zero, implementing the World Economic Forum Climate Governance Initiative in a growing number of European countries is an ongoing source of the latest information and training. Regarding frameworks and standards, Olivier mentioned the impressive speed at which they are being developed. You will do your best to keep abreast of these developments, but you cannot realistically expect, nor are you expected, to know in detail each and every standard. The management, however, must have this knowledge, especially when they choose a voluntary standard to apply or an initiative to adhere to. So ask them, ask the management to explain their reason for selecting this framework, that initiative, and try to assess if they fully understand what it implies, because your responsibility is at stake there. Third point is make sure you have a committee in charge of the subject. At this stage, it does not matter if it's a dedicated committee like the sustainability committee or part of another one, like maybe the strategy committee. In any case, very soon, the audit committee will be first in line. Like uh, mentioned by Olivier, the, C, the CASRD, projects to give them responsibility on non-financial reporting as well as financial reporting. Accounting bonds have shown the value of standardized audited financial statements for development of capital markets and as checks on the way managers run companies. Sustainability disclosures, they will soon follow a similar path. Then back to strategic implementation, make sure climate impact is considered in every business decision. Simple, practical ways to do that. For instance, for investment project, ask for the standard format used for the presentation to the board to systematically include a mention of the climate impact. About climate reporting, show attention. Show attention both to the results and to the process. For the results, are they according to plan? Are, how do they compare with those of other companies? Ask for benchmark. Uh, ask also how the stakeholders reacted to them. So that proves the management that you take the matter seriously. They had, ask also about the process. Uh, maybe management faced difficulties you should be aware of. Ask for their plans to improve reporting maybe indicators to be clarified, new requirements to adapt to, maybe streamline the data collection. To do all this, and most importantly, to ensure the correct execution of your climate strategy, you need to have the right people in place. So please encourage the management to train or hire staff to up to this stake. And you also need tools. Uh, you, you would do well to encourage the management to invest in a robust but evolutive information system. Smaller companies, for now, maybe they rely on the that won't be enough to ensure the traceability demanded by the external. 
and the reliability you need. Most companies will rely on their finance teams to put in place a proper information system. That's because the finance people, they have experience in collecting and consolidating data. Non-financial information must be just as reliable as financial information, not only for compliance reason, also because some non-financial indicators, for instance, climate targets, are often included in executive incentives. Final point, just as for financial information, do not hesitate to ask the external auditors to comment their findings. Within the limits of their deontology, they can also provide some benchmark information and point out areas of improvement. So, if we can leave you with three simple messages on climate reporting that board directors that you should focus on, what should, should they be? Hilda. Well, I think that the climate, the climate crisis requires urgent action now. We strongly recommend that companies move forward boldly ahead of any compulsory compliance requirements for the future benefit of their companies and the planet. Uh, as I outlined earlier, a number of standards are on their way. We generally know what they will be looking for. Don't wait for them to be completed. The fact that they are not yet ready or due should not be a reason to delay your actions. And finally, reporting is for you a means and end. The purpose of climate reporting, the purpose of all ESG data reporting is to track improvement. So the most important thing you can do for your company and for the planet is to focus on ways, on actions to improve your company's performance on climate metrics.